podcasting is a great way to create content, to share your expertise, and to build awareness about your business. And if you've been holding off because you don't know how to edit audio or produce a show, I have great news for you. Squadcast can help. Let me show you how. Thanks for checking out this video. If you want more digital marketing and business growth tips and strategies, consider subscribing to our channel. Now, traditionally, if you were gonna produce a podcast, here's just some of the equipment that you would need. Mics, cords, a recorder, mic stands, some sort of editing software, and a quiet place. Shh. I just started using Squadcast, an online podcasting platform, and it replaces all of that stuff. Well, except for a quiet place. You're still gonna need a quiet place. So let's talk about the stuff I really like with the Squadcast platform. So you should know I am coming from using Skype previously for my podcast interviews. And I don't know what it was about Skype, it's free. I think almost everyone in the course of their life has had a Skype account. Um, but but my guests would repeatedly have issues, whether it's creating an account or figuring out how to use it. And, and that's the thing about being a host of a podcast. You want to make it as easy as possible for your guests. And Squadcast does a great job at that. So I'm going to share my screen here. And I'm going to show you this is the logged in view. And I'm going to do a new session. So, uh, Thunderson Files, dun dun. I would spend a lot of time launching my true crime podcast, The Flenderson Files. Dum bum bum. Flenderson Files. Now, the date you can set whatever. Um, this is what will inform a invitation that gets automatically sent to your guests when you, when and if you put their email in here. Okay. Now you can have up to three guests. So four people total in a squad cast session, and you would just input their email here and they will get an automatic email. Now let's take a look though. Let's do save session and we'll go, uh, right here. Oops, sorry. Right here. Copy invite link. So this is another way that you can just send them a personalized email with or even a meeting invite. If you're not exactly sure if they got it from Squadcast, I haven't had any issues, but I do like to be double sure when it comes to being a podcast host. You can send them the copy invite link and all they do is click that and they're in. This is done through browsers, modern browsers no extra software. They don't need to download anything. It's just like joining a Google Meet. Um, and actually, it's not even like joining a Zoom because Zoom, you have to download um, other software. It's done all in the browser. No extra downloads, no extra software needed. The other thing I really like about Squadcast is this virtual green room. So I'm going to show you exactly what that is is. So if we bring this up here, this is again, the dashboard that you uh, enter into uh, as the host. And I'm going to click into here and I'm going to do join. So when that happens, it brings up and you see right here, this virtual green room. Now this happens a lot in other like online meeting type software. Um, but this will allow you to set your settings before you get into the meeting. So right here, my default microphone, my default output, the camera I'm using. If I want to turn on, echo cancellation by default is always turned on. So that's something that you would, would want to keep. Um, and then when you're looking good, you're sounding good, you see your levels over here, then you would hit join session. So I like this because it, it gives the guests the opportunity to kind of be camera ready, prep ready. If you're out there and you've been in these virtual meetings, it's like how many people jump in and the settings aren't, aren't configured or anything like that. That all happens here before they join. So I really like that. It's a small feature, but it's really thoughtful in the experience. This is kind of a weird scenario, but I do want to bring it to your attention. I use um, 
my Yeti microphone, it has an audio out. And I was using that for my out. And when I was in the green room, uh, it was working. When I joined, however, it would go to my speakers. Um, I bring it up now because what I just went in, my, my workaround was to change my system settings output. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about this in the cons section. Um, but this was not enough to turn me off from this platform, right? But it was something that was a little odd. And I always find some odd thing when I'm testing. Um, so that was a little odd thing that I had. I had to change my output on my system uh, to be my Yeti mic. And then I had no problems at all. Um, it was perfect. The last thing I really love Love, love, I'm saving the best for last. Love about Squadcast is how it handles your audio. So taking a look, so I have here past sessions. So let's pop into that. And uh, I've been working on a project. I've interviewed a lot of different people. But if we twirl this down, this is by default what it does. It automatically, Squadcast automatically records my audio and my guests audio separately. This is fantastic. I know we're talking about how this platform makes it super simple. You don't need to do any audio editing, but if and when you evolve your podcast, the ability to have separate audio channels that is just your guest and then one that's just your host or other guests, it is awesome. And the quality is great. It is great. Again, I told you I was coming from Skype previously. It is so much better than Skype. And here's the, the other thing I love about how it handles your audio. So you'll notice how I have these separate files here. Well, if I check them and then hit mix recording, it merges the files together. So if you don't know how to do any audio production, this, it takes your two files, merges them together, and boom, you can just upload that to your podcast service. That's all. That's all you need to do. It is fantastic. High quality, super easy. Um, just really, really love, love this feature from Squadcast. So those were the good things, but let's give equal time to some of the things that I don't like so much about the Squadcast platform. <laughs> The first thing I don't love so much about Squadcast is there is no video recording. However, however, they are making it very much a point on their website that this is coming soon. So when you do a Squadcast session, all it's going to record is the audio. Even though you'll be able to see video, you as the host, your guest or guests, you'll see video, it will not record the video. It will only record the audio. So this is something that I do think they're going to fix and roll out. But at the time of this review, they were only doing audio recording. In my pros section, I talked a little bit about the very specific issue I had with my output settings. Um, so there is a little hiccup when it comes in to Squadcast that when you're in the session, when you've entered the room, and uh, even if you're not recording, recording or not, um, you cannot change your settings. Now, I do hope this is something that they update, but once you make your settings in the green room, they're essentially locked in. So when I was having the issue that I explained in my pro section where my audio was coming from a different uh, place than I set, um, I couldn't fix it. I couldn't change it. Now, again, I have a good enough microphone that it didn't make a difference. And here's the other good thing, because it records, again, the audio separately, it was an issue that was kind of moot, but I do wish that you would be able to change your settings during, uh, when you're in the room, during a recording or even when you're not recording. So I did find that a little bit strange. The last negative I have about Squadcast is that it works in modern browsers, 
Chrome, Firefox, Edge, if you consider Edge a modern browser. It works in those modern browsers. However, at the time of this recording, it did not work with Safari. Now, most people who are, I am an all Mac person. I actually don't use Safari. I use Chrome or I use Brave and it works just great in those browsers. But you do have people who may only use Safari. Um, so I would encourage you if you go with Squadcast and you send out your invitations and you communicate in advance with your guests that you let them know that this works you know, really well with modern browsers, but if they're using Safari, they should download, they're gonna need to download Chrome, Firefox. Again, I use Brave, um, you know, some other browser that is compatible with Squadcast. Again, we're coming into Squadcast really early. I actually talked with their support team. They are working on building out all kinds of new features. So this may become a moot issue, but at the time of this review, I do want to make you aware that they're working through functionality with Safari. So if you are only a Safari user, um, that could be a challenge. And again, if you're a host, you wanna make sure that your guests understand exactly everything they need to be set up. Cause there's nothing more annoying than the guests not knowing this. And then you use up half of your you know, scheduled recording session to download and install Chrome or something like that. It's annoying. So you're gonna to wanna to get out in front of that. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. If you have a question, drop it below in the comments. And if you're considering Squadcast, definitely use the link below in the description. Full disclosure, it's a referral link. I'll get a small percentage if you end up becoming a customer of theirs. But those funds help to support this very channel. So until next time, I encourage you to keep pedaling.